Hello beautiful people, I hope you're all doing well today. Welcome to our Applied Mechanics lessons. Over the last couple of videos we have been discussing moments and we went into two specific scenarios, although they are similar. The first scenario is where you essentially have a simply supported beam and a single point load. Then the second scenario, just a little bit complex, although still on the same trajectory, it had two point loads instead of one. How you go about solving them is quite the same, although I've noticed that some people may get confused as to what distance to consider between what and what and what, and everything kind of becomes a bit complicated for no reason. So today, I want to complicate our lives just a little bit, a little bit. Today, I want us to consider a scenario where you have a uniformly distributed load. And what we mean by that is that you'll have your beam on here and instead of a single point load you have a uniformly distributed load so this load is acting over the entire distance of the beam and it's not acting at a single point on your beam okay so for this one we'll consider let's say 10 kilonewtons per meter and we'll consider a distance of 10 meters so i've seen that we like that okay so on here you might wonder, so now what happens because I need to consider the distance between a force and a point of reference, but on here the force is everywhere. What does that mean and how do we then go about solving for this? So step one, simplify your life. I always advise to simplify your life. There's no need to complicate your life. So now that we know that when you calculate a simply supported beam with a single force or a single um, point load we know that that makes life easy for everyone so what you can do first off is to convert from a udl to a point load and how you'll go about that you'll multiply the magnitude of the force so that 10 kilonewtons and you'll multiply it by the distance that it's acting over so that gives us a hundred but instead of kilonewton per meter it will be in kilonewtons and where this acts is right in the middle or right in the center of your beam, okay? That is step one. You convert from your UDL to a point load. And then from there, nothing looks out of the ordinary, right? As you know, it's acting right in the middle or right in the center of the beam. So it means now the distances you will be considering will be 5 meters and 5 meters on your right and the left of your loads, respectively. Then how you go about solving it from that point on will be the same as we would do before. So we're first taking moments at A, remembering that your clockwise is equals to your anticlockwise, and looking at how your beam behaves under the load it's subjected under, right? So we'll start off with the load 100 times 5, and it is acting in a clockwise direction. Then your reaction is B at B is acting in an anticlockwise direction. So minus RB times 10 is equals to 0. So 500 is equals to 10 RB. Your RB is, is that 50? There we go. Then similarly, you're going to take moments at B. Clockwise is equals to anticlockwise. You stand at B. First, you'd have that 100 times 5 minus RA times 10. And just by looking at that, by analysis, you're able to see... By analysis, you're able to see that your reaction at A and your reaction at B will most likely be equal because of this UDL that is acting along the entire length of the beam. So it tells you that every single portion of the beam is subjected to exactly the same amount of load. Then you're more than welcome to do your checks as well just to see if your 50 plus 50 gives you 100, which is equivalent to your downward force. Okay, so just to recap, when you have a uniformly distributed load or a UDL, what you first do is to transfer or to change it to a simply supported, you change it into a pin. What am I saying? You change it into a point load. 
then from that point on you're able to calculate it using just the simply supports as well as the point load because um, all you need to consider would be that force that is acting perpendicularly to the beam and then consider the distance between that force and your point of reference. I hope this helped but if it happens that for some odd reason it's still a bit unclear you're more than welcome to leave a comment or to email me whichever method seems to work best for you but if you have any questions you absolutely know what to do. Adios.